What's up traders? Chris Capri here, SecondSkiesForex.com. One of the most common questions I get from either new students or prospective students is a question that you listening right now have probably asked yourself or thought yourself or really wondered and engaged in. And the question always comes in the form of how much can I expect to be making per week, per month, per year? Various forms of that question come on in. And so I wanted to do a video that would kind of just address this question once and for all. And even though it's not the marketing thing to do, like this, I wouldn't necessarily call my response here um, the answer the video I should be doing uh, if I really want to like market myself and like you know and get kind of like all kinds of crazy sales and stuff like that um, if I wanted to do that video this would be a very different video and I'd be talking about very different things so what I'm gonna do is probably going to fly in the face of some of the most popular videos on this subject you know if I want to make this like some crazy video that would have like hundreds of thousands of views in no period of time all I can do is just change the title to here's how you can make five thousand dollars per week trading or trading per week instead this video is about a question can you make five thousand dollars a week trading and so what I'm showing you here is I think a really good way to demonstrate this so this is the performance returns of Horseman Capital um, from 2001 they started in February 2001 all the way up through August 2016. It's the most recent one I've, I've seen with that was a really good image. And Horseman Capital has been one of the most successful hedge funds over this period, over from 2001 to 16. And, you know, as you can see, they've, they've done fantastic. They've only had, what, in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. In 16 years, they've only had one two losing years and the third one they're down 1.97 percent so out of 16 years they've been winning 14 out of 16 that is an extraordinary record for a hedge fund and for most traders that make money on a year-on-year -year basis that is in the upper echelon of uh, number of years profitable you know even Paul Duder Jones one of the most legendary traders of our generation has not made money since 2014. He's lost 2014, 2015, 2016, and he's down 2017, you know? And so what I thought I would do is show you this track record of one of the most successful hedge funds on the planet. And when you start to look at this, it kind of gives you a really good reflection of what you should be expecting. You know, a lot of times people will say with this question, they'll be like, well, okay, I know I'm going to win some months. I'm going to lose some months. Maybe I lose three and I win nine, or maybe I lose six and I win six. But what can I expect on average return? And, you know, they think that, oh, you know, by rephrasing the question and kind of looking at it in that perspective, that then they have some sort of future predictability as to what they can expect. Okay, well, if I know I can make 20% a year, I may lose six months and I may win six months, but I'm okay with that. Never mind the fact that it's always easy to say you're okay with something when you know it's going to be a winner. Um, if you know that at the end of this journey, at the end of this year, you're going to, let's say you were to start trading today, live, and you put $100,000 into an account. Okay, great. And you know that in one year from now, you're going to be up 20%, and you also know you're going to win six months, and you're going to lose six months, and you have no idea what order is going to be, but you know you're going to be 20% uh, ahead at the end of the year. Well, it's very easy to say, like, okay, I can live with that, because I know that I'm going to make this kind of average if I get to a certain level. The reality actually is far different. And when you look at these numbers, even though they've won 14 out of 16 years, you actually cannot really find any sort of pattern or average. Sure, you could average this up and say, hey, what's this total average? It's probably around 20%. And hey, I, I can really feel good with that. Well, that's very easy. But guess what? 
you know that's going to happen. At no point in time during these months, as Horseman was moving along, did they know what they were going to make on the next month. You can see huge swings in the size of losses from minus 8% to minus 1%. You can see losing months of 0.55% and you can see losing months of 7.5% in the same year. You can see some years where they have very few losing months like 01 and 02 not bad and 03 they only had a few losing months. But all of a sudden you start to see more and more losing months as it goes on. And they actually have one where... I think it's right here, one, two, three, four, five, six losing months. Trust me, they couldn't predict or expect to have six losing months in a row. And they couldn't expect to go from one month minus 7.5% to the next month being up 8.86%. When you look at these numbers, even though you can kind of average things out, the bottom line is, is that you really shouldn't be having any expectation. You could have a year where you make 31% and you can lose 24% on the next year. And then you can lose 5.4 or you can make 5.5% and then you can lose 3% the next year. And then next year you can make 16%. That you you should expect that your returns on a year on year basis are not going to be static or super stable. They're going to be different every year. Part of that is because of something you can't control the market. Part of that is because there's something you can't control, volatility. Part of that is because there's certain events that you can't have any control over, like the Swiss National Bank where they remove the floor on Euro, Euro Swiss. You know, some people lost a killing and some people made a killing. And trust me, neither one of those sides could predict or expect that to happen. The bottom line is this. You shouldn't be expecting to make anything in terms of a particular percentage. If you do, you're probably setting yourself up for disappointment. And I can tell you that if you were to, even after you build all the skills to become a professional trader, if you were to say, okay, I'm expecting to make 20% this year, I'm willing to bet that seven out of 10 times that trader is disappointed. And these are people who are already making money. So, I mean, I personally don't have that expectation. I don't sit there on a year-on-year -year basis and say, okay, I'm expecting to make this this month or this this month or this this year. I don't look at it like that. There are certain years uh, that are just fantastic in terms of opportunities. And there are other years that are like, meh. You know, I mean, 2008 was a fantastic year for us. 2008 and 2009 with the volatility was absolutely fantastic. We did exceptionally well. And in fact, we even used to have a trade signal service back in those days, and we were doing exceptionally well. So, but the thing about it is there's nothing about it I could expect, and I don't, I think, I mean, I understand where this question comes from. Most likely you probably work a job now where you can expect a fixed income. Either your salary is fixed, or you're getting salary plus some sort of bonus or commission that depends upon performance. But you can still expect there's a fixed nut in there. That there's some part of it that you know exactly what you're getting. That's part of the comfort and the lure. That's part of the the that's part of the advantages or pseudo advantages of having a fixed income. It's because you know every single month you, there, you I'm going to have this money in the bank. There's security in that. There's confidence. There's solidity in that. The problem is, is that trading turns this model on its head. There's nothing solid in trading. It's constantly moving. There's nothing fixed about it. It's completely interdependent upon things that you cannot control nor predict. And that is something you're going to have to get down with. That is something that you are going to have to work with. That's why I never recommend going like cold turkey from a full-time job to trading full-time. I didn't. I took several years for that process. I mean, for me, it was 01 till 04. You know, so that was a three-year process for me. And so I did other things to make sure I had some other income. And eventually when I felt like that was done, it was like, okay, I can... I can live off trading now. I feel I feel fine about that. 
I understand what it's about. I have a good experience of it, you know, three years trading. Okay, I can, you know, understand that you have no idea what you're going to do in that month. And I shouldn't expect a certain income. I could have one month where I make 10% and the next month where I make nothing. And that's just part of the deal. That's part of trading. And that's why this isn't the most markety type email. Because I'm telling you kind of a cold hard truth about this. Which is that don't expect anything solid. Don't expect anything fixed. Don't expect anything regular per se. The only thing that you should expect to be solid in the markets or about the markets is A, that as long as there's order flow, prices will change over time. And B, that volatility will change. Volatility kind of has its patterns. You know, it goes from like usually before it goes to super high volatility, it's usually a period of exceptional low volatility. Volatility changes over time and you can't control it. Those are the only solid things you should really expect out of the market. And that's, I think, part of the reason why trading is so challenging for people. I get that. I understand that. That's not an easy decision to make. That's why I suggest transitioning into that. But I also think that one of the challenges is that if you think about it, the fact of the matter is 33% of you who are watching the video right now, so for every 10,000 of you that are watching this video right now, 3,333 will make money within a single quarter. The problem is, is that when that kind of um, performance gets measured over a longer scale from three months to say a year, it, the number goes from 33% to about 7%. That's a massive drop off. You have to ask yourself why. Most often the case is because mindset wise and psychologically, you haven't wired your brain to be able to withstand extended losing periods or periods where you're struggling or periods where performance isn't going anywhere. You know, how many of you could go from minus 24% in one year to plus 5% to minus 2.99%? You're going to be at the end of this year, you're looking, wow, I just lost two out of the last three years. Maybe I should go do something else. The problem is, is that if you did that, you would have missed out on all these years like Horseman did. I mean, if they did that, they'd shut up their fun here. There was a lot of profits they would have missed out. I've done the numbers. If this was a $100,000 account starting here, by the time they hit this, I think it's this period here, the account is about $379,000. And if you had kind of quit, you know, in this period, you would have missed on the opportunity to double your account in those four years after. By the end of it, it was like, by the end of the, up to this point, from here to here, it ended up at about six hundred ninety-eight thousand dollars, roughly seven hundred thousand. They started with one hundred thousand. This is an exceptional performance, but they had their challenges. I mean, ask yourself this: How many losing months in a row before you start changing your system? How many losing months in a row before you start changing instruments, before you start changing strategies, before you start looking for a different course, before you start changing time frames, before you start changing anything? How many months is that for you? Is that one month, two months, three months, zero months? How many of you could have lasted that, where was it, that six-month losing streak right here? One, two, three, four, five, six. How many of you could have made it through that? Most don't. That's part of the reason why trading is so challenging. It will challenge your expectations. It will challenge your ability to continually execute and be disciplined in the face of losses, in the face of things not working out for you. Our natural instinct is that if we lose is to avoid it. And our natural instinct is that if we lose several times, to change something of what we're doing. We never think about the fact that maybe we're doing the right thing, but in the wrong time. Maybe what we're doing is right, but it's just not going to work right now. Maybe it's just going to rain when I want it to be sunny. That's just part of the deal. That's what challenges traders so much. And that's, that is the reality of this. And you can see it right here with one of the most successful hedge funds in the last 16 years. While you can, ex you know, while after a while they could expect somewhere between a 15 and 20 some percent return on average, 
the year on year. They didn't know. And trust me, their confidence is probably shaken to some degree after this year and after this year and this year. Not many people make it past that. So the answer to the question of can you make $5,000 a week trading Forex, futures, options, volume, you know, it doesn't matter. The answer is you shouldn't be expecting anything, and that's the wrong approach. I don't think that works. I don't think it works from a mindset perspective. I think you set yourself up. If you're a trader, you're trying to trade probabilities versus risk, right? Probabilities that you're going to actually, you know, this trade's going to work out, and how much am I risking to this to manifest? Well, if you think about it, probabilistically, you are not going to be able to accurately predict your performance at the end of the year. If 7, 8, 9 out of 10 of you can't do that, then aren't you setting yourself up for disappointment by doing that? What's the value in that? Other than giving your mind some sort of false sense of security, what's the real value in that? What do you gain from that? Nothing. You, I can tell you that what you gain actually is disappointment. So my you know, final word on this is don't expect to have a fixed weekly income. It doesn't work like that. You can try and target fixed weekly incomes like, okay, I'm only going for X amount of pips and X amount of profit. But trust me, those people actually end up underperforming over time because there are going to be many situations where there's going to be very big moves that you're missing out on because you're going for a fixed amount. And usually somebody's outperformance for the year relies upon 10, 20% of their trades. Usually the majority of your wins come from a few small trades and the rest are just kind of break even slightly above, slightly under where so, you know, they're just kind of like little singles. But then there's these monster home runs where everything was loaded on deck, you know, on base and you just, you brought it all in grand slam. That's where you're going to make most of your money. But if you're not having those grand slams because you're always kind of cutting yourself short, you're going to underperform over time. And I guarantee you will underperform most professional traders. So with that being said, don't expect to be making $5,000 a week trading Forex or any amount per week. The only thing you should truly expect is that volatility changes as long as there's order flow, the price will move, and that you can't control any of those variables. That's what you should be expecting. Beyond that, you need to go in this with a different mindset. If the mindset you had right now was working, if it was the right mindset, it would be working, but it's not. So to you who's listening right now that that is the case, that it's not working right now, you probably need to change some of those equations, some of those ways of dealing with it, some of those ways of relating to this. And you have to learn to understand variance. You have to learn to understand probabilities. And I don't mean conceptually. I mean experientially to where you can see probabilities playing out over a long series of data points and trades over time. And then after you've had enough experience with it and you've weathered those ups and downs, that you're able to keep on trading with the same level of discipline, execution, and mindset. That's what it's going to take. And that's why this is so hard, because not many people can do it. And guess what? I understand why. You currently are not wired to do that. You are not wired. Right now, your brain is not wired to make money trading. Most likely, it is not wired to make money trading. That is biology. That is evolution. That is how we all wired today. So if you're going to want to make money trading, you're going to have to rewire that. The good thing is you can learn how to do that. That's what we teach. Now, if that seems interesting to you, check us out at secondskiesforex.com. You have our Advanced Traders Mindset course specifically to teach you exactly how to think successfully while trading, how to execute, how to be disciplined, how to not get rocked by your emotions, how to have confidence in your abilities, how to go through these cycles and still have kind of the same focus. Your eye is still on the target and it hasn't changed. That's what we teach. And if you want to learn the technical skills to do that, that's our advanced price action course. And we've shown that 
these methods work. Our students are making money. We've shown that before, and we continue to show it students inside the course, and I continue to get accounts from my students showing them making money over long periods of time. That's a real thing. So with that being said, what did you think of this video? Did you enjoy it? Did it challenge your questions? Did it answer a question? Did you think it was the marketing answer, or was it the cold hard truth? What did you think? Does this kind of change the way you think about trading? I hope so. The good thing is, is that you have options. There are many ways to climb up the mountain. There are many paths to your success in trading. That's something we can give you. That's something we can teach. And so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Also make sure to comment and leave your thoughts below. And I want to hear your responses on this. And what did you think about this? Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Good luck trading out there. And I hope to be working with you soon.